I got my M1 MacBook Pro early this year, so I have been using it well over six months now. I do a lot of web development in my everyday use of the M1 MacBook Pro. So I use usually Docker, VS Code, I spin up some React dev servers and that kind of stuff, just to mention a few. And in those situations, I really haven't seen any like lack of performance. On the other hand, I haven't like concentrated on the performance at all because everything has worked very smoothly. So I haven't really seen any bad performance, but then on the other hand, I haven't really seen any like super lightning fast performance where I go like, whoa, how is that so fast? I actually did some work just a couple of days ago with my old MacBook Pro, which was a 2016 model. And when using that, I could really see the difference that some tasks take much longer with the old one than with the new one. So I guess it's true what Barney Stinson says that New is always better. When talking about performance, you can't really dismiss the battery life. And with this, the battery life has been good, in my opinion. When I'm doing my normal coding stuff, uh, probably the heaviest things that I run are Docker and Chrome. So when doing that, the battery really lasts whole day for me. So six to eight hours. So I don't necessarily need a charger for a whole day. I don't have any like exact numbers, how long it lasts, but when doing normal work day, doing normal coding stuff, uh, I really don't need a charger for a whole day. But if I do some more intensive tasks, it probably lasts a bit uh, shorter time. So then you need to really plug it in. So the battery life is not necessarily like super good, but uh, in my opinion, for my use, it's been great, uh, it lasts whole day for me and I can do my work without charging it in between. So keyboard, this is big because Apple changed the keyboard for the new MacBook Pro and it's a huge improvement compared to the previous one. So keys are much easier to hit and you just feel so much more confident when typing with this and it's also much more enjoyable. The touch bar was also removed and replaced with physical keys, which I love. Especially as a programmer, having a physical ESC button at the top corner is so important because that's a key that I'm hitting multiple times a day. So this probably goes to the nice to have section, but I really had to mention it because yeah, I really love it. So MagSafe is back and you don't anymore have to charge your laptop using the uh, USB port, USB-C, or what is it? Yeah, anyway, the USB port, and you can use the MagSafe charger. The feeling when you put that charger cord next to the port and you feel how the magnets go to work. Wow, that's just so satisfying. I work a lot with the laptop on my lap and I can say not once have I needed to stop working because the computer has heated up so much. At least in my use, it has always stayed cool and not heated up too much. And now that I think of it, I think I have never even heard the fans start up. So I guess there's some Apple magic going on that keeps the computer cool even when doing performance intensive tasks. For the looks, it's a bit heavier and bulkier than my previous model, the 2016 model, but this doesn't really bother me. For me, it's okay to have a little bit heavier and bulkier laptop because I don't really travel that much and most of the time I'm just going back and forth between office and home. So it's no problem if it's a bit heavier. Small thing, but I also noticed that opening the lid is much easier thanks to the bulkier size. When the M1 Max first came, it really wasn't a good time to buy one right away as a programmer. This is because most of your development tools weren't compatible for a long time with the M1 chips. When I got my M1 MacBook Pro, 
It had already been, I think, over a year since the release of the first M1 chips. So there was no compatibility issues with any tools or programs that I use. Only time I ran into compatibility issues was when I was trying to run some old PHP image with Docker. And that was also solved very quickly just by rebuilding or using an other image or something like that. I don't remember exactly, but uh, what I remember is that it was a quick fix. There was already a new compatible version of that image, which I could just use. So when it comes to compatibility, I think there is at least for the tools and programs I use for development, uh, there hasn't been any issues. One thing that always takes time when getting a new laptop is setting your development environment. It's something that we don't do very often, so it can be hard and frustrating to set it up because, hey, you don't do it that often, so you don't remember what you want to install, what you want to configure and all that stuff. Over the years, I have developed the process and the list of things that I need to get my new laptop ready to go as fast and easy as possible. I share my whole process and things I install in this video over here. So go ahead, click it and watch it next.